Anybody has any questions so far on the fishbone? People who have never done it before. Okay, so this is these are just examples of the different headers that I talk about. That how how do I know that which cause that I put under which header? Okay. So lack of training, lack of experience. Uh, this is kind of under men. Any sort of process gap under process or method. Machines or equipment, any sort of issues. Uh, just one question that I have: What do you think is the purpose of doing this? Why are we doing it? Can someone think of it? To decide the controllable, non-controllable. Controllable, non-controllable. Controllable. How do? How does it tell me? Let's say if I have, if I have sixty causes that I have identified from the brainstorming mm -hmm. after removing. After removing the duplicates, I have categorized these sixty under different five or six headers. Now, how do I come to know which one of these are controllable and which of them is uncontrollable? I have to do some. I have to do some prioritization matrix, uh, which tells me whether it's controllable or uncontrollable. But in this in this exercise, uh, do you see anywhere it is mentioned as controllable or uncontrollable? I have just mm -hmm. list down the causes. Yeah. So that thing which you're talking about would come in the next stage. But what is the purpose? You should ask this question to yourself also. I already had a list of causes that I've identified. Why am I putting on a different different headers? So we are we are categorizing that. Uh, uh, similar, say for an example, if it's relating to machine, we we know uh, exactly which team to reach out to. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's what it matters. The purpose only is to give me an indication. That what action that I need to take. Yes. If I see that the causes which are under machinery, I'll have to speak to the IT team. Or maybe if in case of a manufacturing, I have to speak to the manufacturing department or a or a department who, who works on the plant. Okay. If it's sort of a process issue, I would have to speak to the operations. If it's a people related issue, okay, I would have to speak to the respective managers or maybe uh, maybe some of the some of the bottom uh, uh, you know performers and ask them what are those reasons. So these category tells me which department, which team, what sort of an action that I need to get in touch with. Let's imagine you don't prepare these category. Do you think it would be easy for you to take action, or do you think it's difficult? If I have a long laundry list of causes that I have, it will be difficult. Okay, so it would be very difficult for us to do that. So this gives me an indication that where I should take action. Who? Which department, which team, which function would be able to help me? Okay, so that's why these six M's takes place um, when we do the fish bone exercise. So, when we are in the analyze phase, we have to do this brainstorming, identify the causes. So, let's take an example. You do the brainstorming and you identify seventy causes. Okay, now do you think it's practically possible to work on all the causes? Or get to the root cause. How much time does it take? Maybe we should prioritize, right? Right. We'll Absolutely. identify the ones which will have the maximum impact. Yeah. So we have to understand from the beginning when we define phase, we we decided and agreed that this is one issue that we are looking at controlling or improving. So here, out of all the six M, uh, all the seventy or eighty uh, ideas, we have to figure out which are the ones which are contributing maximum to that particular idea that we are focusing on to improve. And how do you decide that? Pareto, you don't have any data at the moment. We don't have the data now, so so we have the uh, have to determine which are uh, maybe I mean which are more of process related causes, right? That can be fixed without the data. Okay. Yeah. So or so maybe you, yeah. Please go ahead. Or maybe uh, though we don't have the quantitative data, but we would definitely definitely have some qualitative data. So, basis that can we um, prior. Okay. So let's say you identified you had a you had a large team and everybody contributed a lot of causes. You get a fifty. You get a ideas fifty ideas, and out of fifty, you see that out of fifty, 
20 are qualitative or maybe 30 are qualitative where data is available and 20 where there's a gut feeling where data is not available and how do you prioritize those 30 uh, which which cause would you work on first see uh, when we uh, list out the causes and we do we will uh, segregate which causes are affecting the customer satisfaction which are uh, affecting the quality of the product or which are uh, affecting the uh, productivity first preference would be given for the customer satisfaction based on why that so why do you think so uh, there might be a different uh, project ctq also wherein it is not very important to the customer but how do i decide whether it's a customer business distributor regulator simarpreet uh, should we focus on the must be uh, which was there in the kano model uh, first was must be uh, the most important thing for us now uh, those are customer ctqs these are okay. i'm not talking about these are the causes but we have to identify the main cause where it causing the problem sorry i i didn't get that uh, can you please repeat uh, uh, we should identify what is the root cause for the problem so you say, you mean to say i'll pick all the cause one by one i'll calculate i'll i'll uh, take out the root cause and then i'll decide which means i have to work on all of them no so, maybe so, so, Oh, I'm, I'm just asking a question. You might be you right. What, uh, yeah, you are saying that uh, because in the cause and effect, you know, we we uh, we know what is the cause and we try to know the effect of that, the possible or potential effect. Sorry, or we the effect and we try to know the cause. Why? Why? Okay. So in that case, we see which of the particular uh, uh, cause is contributing to the major effects. I mean, that qualitative information, at least at this point in time. Uh, teams would have it would not be a very much blank um, brainstorming or um, you're very very close you're very very close uh, you use, use a word team here and this and this technique is to be done with a team only yeah Let so there is an expert your... group there is an expert group also which takes part in the brainstorming smes yeah. or maybe yeah so we have to take the so the, the answer is there's nothing right or wrong answer but the best practice is that we have to take the consensus of the team members to categorize these causes as high, medium, or low, okay? And basis the prioritization that we done with the help with the help of the team in the brainstorming itself. I'll be focusing on those causes, okay? So for that, uh, Simar, will we also consider cost as one of uh, the aspects here, along with the team's inputs? If something uh, requires a yeah. machine change. It's obviously going to involve cost. Yes. So, so there can be many criteria that the team can use to define whether it's a high, medium, or low. That is upon the discretion of the team. Okay. So that's why I I just labeled it as high, medium, and low. Whatever definition team wants to give it to high impact. High impact could be the one which would be which would be easy to work upon. Would have less cost. Would be able to get to the root cause in a very short span of time, and we think that you know, uh, if we work on this kind of a solution, we'll be able to get to the root cause easily. Okay, so that's that's a definition that we want to give it to the uh, cause on which we're working on. So I will talk. I will talk about a tool called which is called a cause and effect matrix. This is one particular tool. I'll just show it to you. How does it look like in the next slide? But I want to tell you the features of this tool. Cause and effect matrix is one particular tool which is used for prioritizing causes. It's a judgment-based tool, and as you said, it captures the knowledge of the SMEs in the in the process, and this makes the process somewhat objective. Earlier, it was very very subjective because everybody was saying that according to me, this is a high impact. According to me, this is a low impact and medium. So this exercise helps all the team members to be on the same page and prepare the cause and effect matrix. Okay. So we can get, so these are the ratings that can be given to the high impact ones, which is probably nine for the medium one, which is three and for the low impact, which is one. This is a kind of template that you can prepare list down all the causes, probable causes that you've identified here. Uh, the nine ones are the high one, three are the medium and one is the uh, low impact. Okay. 
and then there is an output output indicator wherein we multiply it by 10 so that we look the number clearly so this is that this is a consensus of the team whatever logic whatever formula that the team believes depending upon the metric we will give it a high medium or low okay it is essential to get an agreement of more than 50% of the team to make one cause as a high medium or low okay so and especially the expert comments which is the sme who, who are there in the process for a longer time and this is that uh, we will make a, a call whether it's a high medium or low along with that when we talk about the qualitative and quantitative data there's another technique which is called as process door approach and data door approach okay process door approach is a is an approach wherein i don't have that data available for that particular so for example if one of the cause is employee motivation if somebody said employee motivation is a is one of the potential cause and due to that uh, my net promoter score is very very low do i have the data for that no i don't know it's just a gut feeling okay i would use a different technique to get to the root cause so that i would refer as a process door data door is a kind of a cause for which i have the data available so for example if somebody says shift shift time okay so i can easily uh, fetch the data for morning evening and night shift if there are three shifts available if somebody says days of the week okay so then i can have the data for days of the week if somebody says uh, the trainer if somebody says the team leader if somebody says the manager okay uh, if somebody says any cause which has a data available that's a data door if there is no data available for that particular cause which i have listed here that's a process door so i do a combination of both here the impact as well as uh, the process versus data to prioritize and what my cause which is the cause should i be working upon typically high impact are the ones that i'll be looking at always uh, to resolve uh, the issue that i'm currently looking at uh, and medium were the ones i have to look at probably in a stage when the high ones are not figuring out in that way but uh, the entire focus should be on to identify the vital fuels uh, so that i would be able to focus on this those issues so this is one of the prioritization matrix tool which is cause and effect matrix uh, which can be done with the help of the team itself there's another there's another tool which is called control and impact matrix okay so there are two tools available we can use either one of them okay this is called control impact matrix wherein we are adding another angle which is in control and out of control wherein we have categorized high medium and low okay so what i'll do here is i will categorize all my causes into high mid high impact in control medium impact in control low impact in control similarly high impact out of control medium impact out of control low impact out of control by looking at this diagram what do you think which of these six boxes i'll be focusing on 